composition studies toward a greater visibility. Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Joseph Pagoda, or AJP, and composition studies has been a big and exciting part of my life since mid-March. I've read almost 100 articles, have read over 500 discussion posts, have written about 42 formal pages for this class. And in this video, I want to briefly go over some working answers to our big question, what is composition studies? Specifically, I will outline a composition studies that is one, accepting, two, burden, three, curious, four, disturbed, five, evidence-based. These five components, accepting, burdened, curious, disturbed, evidence-based, highlight some of what is valued at the intersections of composition studies, disability studies, or CRIP studies, and pedagogy. These five components help make key aspects of composition studies visible in direct, tangible ways. Let's get started. Accepting. Composition studies in 2022 accepts and understands that what we call correct writing and correct grammar is the product of privilege and social constructions. Language exists as it does because enough people with power agree to those conventions of correctness. And compositions outside such rules and traditional mediums are still valid and accepted within composition studies. But it hasn't always been so accepting. In a piece from 1985, Mike Rose expresses concerns about common assumptions that judge writing in quote, in terms of presence of error, end quote. He also speaks about the perpetual problem voiced by college educators of why can't they write? Why are they so illiterate? And adds, please understand, it is not my purpose here to whitewash the very real limitations a disheartening number of our students bring with them. I dearly wish that more of them were more at home with composing and could write critically better than they do. And I wish to God that more of them read novels and poems for pleasure, but it is simply wrong to leap from these unrequited desires to claims of illiteracy. Rose advances a vision of composition studies that accepts our students where they are when they arrive to college. Rose's article is also an example of how scholarship published within composition studies often challenges prevailing mores. Thus, composition studies is not only accepting of students, it is accepting of research that shows where composition studies is not yet so accepting. Burdened. Composition studies specifically and English studies more generally is also burdened. Burdened with independently meeting the needs of college students. Students who do need more help improving their reading or writing abilities are typically sent to English studies departments. As technology changes how communication and writing happens and makes video communication, such as the video you are watching now, possible, English studies departments are only further burdened and given more tasks to ensure that students are ready for careers post-graduation. English studies is also burdened, and burdened is a strong word with the bulk of innovations that happen. Women's studies, queer studies, disability studies, the digital humanities, all grew out of English studies departments. Such innovative ways of thinking and challenging don't often happen in other academic disciplines. English studies is burdened with developing new methodologies and then forever burdened with defending those methodologies. And yet composition studies is not perfect. Sometimes educators in composition studies see themselves burdened by students who need academic accommodations. The same goes for professors of composition studies. For example, Hilary Snellnick writes in 2020 about being a burden to her college because she requested the accommodation of a stool. Curious. In addition to being accepting and burdened, composition studies is also curious. It's always looking for more effective ways to achieve its promotion of literacies. It's always looking for more voices to include. 
For the journal analysis, I studied pedagogy, an academic journal that started in 2001. These articles touch on how composition studies is curious about fake news, undergraduate research, e-readers, ungrading, and how all of this impacts its missions. Composition studies is always looking for new or different and better ways of doing things. Recent articles have especially looked at a pedagogy and a design principle called universal design with curiosity and fascination. Universal design is basically a practice that aims to make everything in a class or a given setting as accessible and flexible as possible by default. Further, composition studies is curious about concepts such as script time and how it, along with universal design, can benefit all students. In her 2017 article, Tara Wood says, Crypt time is flex time, not just expanded time, but exploded. It requires reimagining our notions of what can and should happen in time or recognizing how expectations of how long things take are based on very particular minds and bodies. Rather than bend disabled bodies and minds to meet the clock, crit time bends the clock to meet the disabled bodies and minds. Disturbed. After accepting, burdened, and curious, composition studies and people within composition studies are disturbed. Scholars such as Adam Banks are disturbed by or fearful of the past and its lingering power over others. Other scholars such as Doug Hees are more disturbed by the possible disruption in the future. In terms of disability, Catherine A. Patterson's article in 1994 shows disturbance. Disturbance toward the complete lack of articles by or about disability in composition textbooks. Her disturbance at this exclusion resulted in her making her own textbook, certainly one of the first of its kind, if not the first. Brenda Jo Bergerman and her colleagues write in 2001, also disturbed at the invisibility of the crip body. They write that because we already challenged the binaries of theory and practice, writing and thinking and self and other, we should be well equipped, even eager, to embrace the critique of the false, able, disabled binary that is articulated by disabled scholars. Most notably, in a symposium collection edited by Adam Hubrick and Ruth Orsino, professors working in composition studies write about being intensely disturbed about their colleagues' behavior and the profession's behavior toward them as disabled people. For instance, they write about the inaccessibility of academic spaces at academic conferences, being gaslit with announcements about how accessible spaces are, being told that American Sign Language interpreters are too expensive. Cody A. Jackson and Christina V. Cedillo specifically write to their colleagues in composition studies. They say, we cannot, we want, tolerate any longer. You're throwing your hands in the air and deeming injustice beyond your control. Cripping our discipline requires a politics of risk. Evidence-based. Composition studies does not just make claims. It does not just adopt new practices or abandon old ones. It bases claims and practices on data. Evidence includes the experiential, the theoretical, observations, surveys, and analysis of student artifacts. All of these are important to composition studies and it's looking to evidence. For instance, the previously mentioned Tara Wood came to her conclusions about crip time by interviewing 35 students and collecting over 2000 minutes of audio. Additionally, in a 2020 multi-authored piece about student resistance to disabled professors, a group of disabled composition studies scholars writes expressing frustration as some students write derogatory comments about them, such as, I mildly insulted someone with a communication disorder would teach us how to communicate, or she's smart for a deaf woman. They use such evidence along with linguistic evidence with details about how 
different disabilities manifest in different spaces to argue that there is no such thing as neutrality in teaching or in research, that neutrality is an illusion only sometimes available to the privileged, especially when it comes to disability or other differences. I think it's important to underscore that composition studies especially sees personal experience and reflection as valid evidence. Composition studies cares about theory, but it really cares about the paraxis. Composition studies is outlined here is accepting, burdened, curious, disturbed, and evidence-based. This brief overview and this framework aim to highlight some of my learning in one way to synthesize the what's of composition studies, what it is and what it values. Composition studies can't be boiled down to any one stable what, but can and should be celebrated for its ever increasing, ever more inclusive promotion of literacies. For more details on anything I've gone over today, please visit my portfolio page. Here is a brief overview of the sources used for this presentation. And thank you for watching.